MLB The Show 20 is finally here, and it is time to start our franchise mode. If you guys did see the team reveal video, you would know that it is the Detroit Tigers. If you did not watch that video, I will put that in a card above. You guys will have a chance to watch that at the end of this video. Just click on that. But we are going to start this franchise mode. I am excited to get this thing going. We're turning off GM contracts because we're not accepting getting fired. This could be a tough rebuild. So we'll see what ends up happening. We will start in spring training just because this roster, I had started from the regular season and it did not look good. So we'll start from spring training so we can do what we want to do with it. You can see here, this is our starting pitchers through the organization. Xiao Ching Chang is a 78D potential and is our second best guy. This is going to be rough. Obviously, Tariq Skubal is one of the Tigers' top prospects. Casey Mize and Matt Manning are actually ranked above them on MLB Top 100, so I don't know why their overall is worse. But, hey, Ryden Rosters made these rosters, and... I'm just going to go with what he has here. You can see the relief pitching in this organization. Absolutely dreadful. Just not a lot that we can use in this organization. A couple Bs on the low end there. Some of them are a little bit old, but a lot of Ds in this organization. It's rough. Joe Jimenez, we actually had him in the Seattle Mariners franchise last year. If you didn't get a chance to watch my franchise, I will leave the playlist either in the end screen or in a card above for you to check that out if you do wish. Austin Romine and Jake Rogers, I think we're going to split the duties at catcher there. I want to kind of bring the young guy along. CJ Cron is probably the Tiger answer to after Miguel Cabrera, but we're going to be using Cabrera a lot in his hopefully maybe final season. Jonathan Scope, the new sc starter there at second base. Candelario at third base. Nico Goodrum at shortstop. And none of these guys really have any competition. Kristen Stewart, Tigers have kind of been bringing him up through the organization. He's getting kind of old now. He's got to kind of prove himself in the majors. Victor Reyes, I like him at center. Mabin could help out a little bit as a situational player. Jorge Bonifacio out at right field is kind of what they're working with right now. But we're going to go ahead and bring in some help. Yaziel Puig, I want to bring a, little, a guy with a little pop in the bat here. We will sign him to be another outfielder in case we need a little help there. So this is the lineup we're going to run with for now. Victor Reyes will lead off against lefties with Jonathan Scope, CJ Cron, Miguel Cabrera, Nico Goodrum, Heimer Candelario, Jake Rogers, Yaziel Puig, and Kristen Stort. So that's the lineup we're going to run with against left-handed pitchers. Without the DH, it's just going to be the pitcher. I like to bat in the eighth hole, so we'll do that. And obviously just take the DH out. Against righties, Reyes will remain in the lineup at the leadoff spot. Goodrum, Puig, Cabrera, Scope, Cron, Stort, Romine, and Candelario will round out the lineup so we'll take a look at some of the players on this team before we get into some gameplay victor reyes coming off of a three home run 25 rbi 69 game season he played 100 games in 2018 he's got a lot to prove nico goodrum has had two seasons where he hasn't even batted 250 but he's at 16 and 12 home runs at the shortstop position. Not horrible, but he needs to improve as well. Puig, obviously, we're picking him up now. He had a 24 home run season last year. He's pretty much a 260 hitter, 265 hitter, pretty much for the last four seasons where he's been actually hitting some home runs. We're hoping he can provide some pop. Now, Miguel Cabrera is interesting. I've mentioned this a couple of times in different videos. He needs 23 home runs to get to the 500 club and 185 hits. He hasn't had 185 hits since 2016, and he hasn't had 23 home runs since 2016, so we're hoping he can have one of his better seasons at the end of his career here. Jonathan Scope has been pretty good over the last four seasons, except for 2018, where he was splitting time between Baltimore and Minnesota, so we're hoping he can do something. CJ Cron, 
spent last year with Minnesota. He had a decent year, just like in 2018 with Tampa. This will be his fourth team in four seasons. Kristen Stewart, kind of a rookie last year. He came up in 2018, played 17 games, didn't really do a whole lot. He batted 233 in 104 games, hoping to get more from him. Austin Romine had one of his better seasons last year, batting 281 with eight home runs. He's always kind of been a situational catcher, and we're probably going to do that again with him. Condelario, eight home runs last year in 94 games. I don't expect a ton from him. Elvis Vizcaino's on the bench. He's never really played a game in the majors. Bonifacio had a nice 2018 or a nice 2017, that is. 2018 went a little lower, and 2019, he only played five games for Kansas City. So now Bonifacio playing for us. What can we get out of him? I don't know. Cameron Mabin spent last year with the New York Yankees, and he hit the most home runs he's ever hit, which could be a good sign. We'll see what he's able to do here in Detroit. Batted 285 last year in 82 games. If we can get that from him, we'll be gold. And Jake Rogers, he only played 35 games last year for the Tigers, hit four home runs. So we're looking to groom him, bring him along as we take a look at the rotation here. Matthew Boyd will lead it off. Zach Godley will be the number two starter. Then Daniel Norris, Spencer Turnbull, and Yvonne Nova. We will look to bring back Michael Fulmer, but in real life, he is gone till about midseason, and I don't want to bring him back until then. Luis Castilla, Xiao Ching Chang will be the long relievers. Jose Cesarno, Roni Garcia, and Gerson Moreno will be the middle relievers. Alex Wilson and Buck Farmer for the setups, and Joe Jimenez will be the closer. We take a look at these pitchers now before we jump into gameplay coming right up. Matthew Boyd hasn't had a winning season as a starter since 2016 and he's never had a sub for ERA. That's kind of rough, honestly. We're hoping to get better from him. Zach Godley spent his last four years with the Arizona Diamondbacks, and he's had one really good season where he uh, pitched at a 3.37 ERA, and he was under 500 that year. Daniel Norris hasn't really had a great season yet either. Um, he pitched in 27 games early in his career where he pitched under a 4 ERA, but he hasn't done it since. Spencer Turnbull has only really been a starter for one season. He had 30 starts last year. Wasn't good. And Ivan Nova has been, ever since he left the Yankees, an okay starting pitcher. Never better than a fifth starter. And we have a lot of guys unproven in this bullpen. You can see a lot of them just haven't really had that game time experience. Look at that. Garcia, Moreno, just not a lot of guys with experience. Now, Wilson's somebody with experience, but last year he pitched 13 games to a 9.53 ERA. That's awful for a guy who's been kind of as good as he has been with a 3.44 career ERA. Buck Farmer has been getting his production ramped up over the last couple of years. Hopefully he continues that trend. And Joe Jimenez, never really a good season from him. Don't really know why he's ranked so high. So we simulate through spring training to take a look at how we've done. 10 and 19 was our spring training record. Not what we really want to see as we will go into opening day progressive field in cleveland these are the lineups that is what we're rocking with and welcome to progressive field for the home opener of 2020 detroit tigers going to take on the cleveland indians and on the mound for the indians will be shane bieber those of you who haven't been around the channel a long time i am an indians fan doing a tigers franchise kind of weird isn't it there's a strikeout for reyes right off the bat Bieber able to get him, and now 2-2 pitch with a man on second here for the Indians, and that's going to bring home a run. Throw is just not in time. As a nice try and attempt there, but Lindor ends up with the ribby. So now a 3-2 pitch to Fran Mil Reyes. Nice as he gets him window shopping. And Matthew Boyd picks up a strikeout there. Now in the bottom of the second, another strikeout as he fires that one past Roberto Perez. 
for another strikeout. Now, bottom three. This time, he's not going to get it by Franmil Reyes. That thing is gone over the left field wall. And Cleveland will take a 3-0 lead on the two-run shot by Franmil Reyes. And the Indians with an early 3-0 lead. Progressive field going wild. And we're going to need some offense in order to come back in this thing. We'll see if we can provide some kind of spark here as Matthew Boyd still on the mound here. Bottom four, he gets a nice strikeout of Jordan Luplo. And that'll keep us going here a little bit. Into the top of the fifth, it's Kristen Stewart. And that one's looking really good for him. Instant moonshot into right field as he yanks that one out of here. A solo shot for Kristen Stewart. So the first run for our season scored on a solo shot from Kristen Stewart. One of the more unlikely heroes, I guess, on this team. Probably one of the last people you would have guessed to homer first for us. Now into the top of the sixth. And an opportunity for the Tigers is thwarted. By the Indians defense, turning two, starting with Jose Ramirez. Nice play made. Adam Simber comes in. Last year was a 6-3 and three relief pitcher with a 4-4-5 ERA. Not exactly what you want to see. And right away, going to give up a single into left field. And the Detroit Tigers got the tying run at the plate, but Candelario can't smack that one as he goes down on the 75-mile-an-hour pitch. And now, next batter, it's going to dribble over to first. And look at this. Again, that Indians defense with the double play. Absolutely huge for them. So, Brad Hand going to come in to try and close it out. A 3.30 ERA last year. He gets Goodrum on a really high fastball. He probably shouldn't have even swung at that. Here's Puig. He's going to swing at the low slider. And another miss. Not exactly a bad uh, decision, but he just couldn't make a connection. And Cabrera, same thing for him as he will go down swinging. So Brad Hand strikes out the side to give the Indians the 3 1 win on opening day. Shane Bieber, the player of the game, goes seven strong with seven strikeouts. As we take a quick look at the box score, Kristen Stort, the only one to drive in a run for us. Uh, nobody had more than one hit in this game for our Tigers. Boyd, he pitched an okay game, gave up three runs, went about seven innings, so not horrible. Reyes, Franmil Reyes, the only one to hit a home run for the Indians. He picked up two RBIs, and Lindor picked up one. Bieber goes seven strong, one earned run. Simber and Hand do exactly what they need to do to close it out. We take a look at the second game against Cleveland, a 4-3, 13-inning thriller. This one was as we will take this win. Kristen Stort provides three RBIs in this ball game, and again, an unlikely hero. He's just playing really well to start the season. You gotta love it. Uh, Scope with the other RBI for our team in this one, and we take a look at the Indians, and it was a home run for Hernandez and Lindor that got them the three runs, but. A 4-3 game. It goes into extras, and Godly just pitched absolutely godly. Jimenez with the blown save. He pitched horribly, but Chang able to get the win in extras. Got to like that. Then the next game, the closeout game against Cleveland, the rubber game. We get a win 7-4, even with giving up three runs in the ninth. So we were killing this one 7-1. Reyes, Puig, and Scope all hitting moon balls out of the park and if you take a look at the Cleveland box score it was Hernandez and Ramirez to hit the home run so Hernandez has hit a couple against us in that series Norris pitched pretty well but only went four and two-thirds giving up one run Castilla came in he went three and two-thirds gave up three earned runs but Cisnero and Jimenez closed this thing out for us Carrasco pitched horribly for Cleveland now we move into our home opener as we will take on the Kansas City Royals. Obviously, they have some guys who can play there with Merrifield, Adalberto Mondesi, some decent players on that Royals team, so we can never be too careful 
as we definitely want to make sure we take them seriously here at Comerica Park. Spencer Turnbull going to make his first start of the year. As I had mentioned earlier in the video, 30 starts last year, a 3-17 record. Ouch. We'll see if he can improve uh, this season, and if he can start off with a win, that would definitely help. And that's a very nice strikeout with runners on. Here with a runner on in the top of the second and two outs and just can't get to it. I believe that's Cameron Mabin. He can't get there, and that is going to provide a run for the Royals as they will take the early 1-0 lead. So now later on here with the bases loaded, very nice getting the ground ball out, which will get us out of a huge jam. So now here, they're going to actually call that a walk on Jorge Soler. Skip does not like that. And then that ends up resulting in this moonshot for Salvador Perez. Just gets this thing way out of here. A three-run bomb. And makes it a 4 nothing game when we probably could have been out of the inning by now. Had that not been called a walk, it kind of... Really pissed off Spencer Turnbull and really just snowballed into a really bad inning. Now top four with one away, and that one's gone. Right field, short porch, and it's Adalberto Mondesi. Again, I mentioned him earlier as one of the players to watch out for, and it's proving to be true as 5 nothing is the lead for the Royals in just the fourth inning. So Spencer Turnbull has not improved so far. Here's Miggy, and Miggy's going to line one over the left field wall. No chance we thought that that thing was going out, but it is gone. It carries just enough. And Miguel Cabrera, that's one out of 23 he needs this year to hit the 500 club. Gotta love him getting that done. Now Xiao Ching Chang coming into the game. He's pitched one game so far this season to the 1-0 record. That was the extra inning game against Cleveland. There's a strikeout of Gordon and Alex Ord Gordon going down. So now still with two on, and he gets the out there. That's going to provide a run scored off of the tag up. So now runner on third with two away, and he gets Solaire to strike out. That is very important, and a very nice, nice inning pitched by Chang. He unfortunately couldn't save every run, but he did what he could there, and then the double play. Detroit really trying to come back in this one, and Jesse Hahn is going to take the mound. He Pitched one game so far this season. Hasn't done a lot. And right away, Jake Rogers is going to take this thing over the left field wall. A no-doubter. And right away, the Tigers, 6-2 in the bottom of the seventh. So, hey, maybe they have a chance. Crazier things have happened, especially on this channel. A 2-1 pitch here in the top of the ninth inning. And that thing's over the left field wall. Just a lot of Bombs in this game. Jorge Soler able to hit the solo shot. Getting revenge for that strikeout earlier. And now back-to-back -back home runs for the Royals, making it 8-2. to two. That's Hunter Dozier. And that is gone. And unfortunately, the Tigers faithful going to have trouble seeing a win here as in the top of the ninth, two more added making it 8-2. to two. So we'll see if the Tigers have what it takes. Here's the full count pitch, and Kron, just too much pressure on him there. He swings at the inside pitch, probably shouldn't have. And now it's going to be the 1-2 pitch over to Cabrera. That's grounded over to Short, and obviously he has no speed anymore. He, not a chance he beats that out. The 1-2 pitch to Jake Rogers. He will swing through it. Past the ball, though, and it will be thrown on to first to end the game. The Kansas City Royals spoil our home opener, just like the Cleveland Indians spoiled our season opener. So Salvador Perez, player of the game, he goes two for four with his three-run shot, obviously. Alberto Mondesi, Hunter Dozier, and Jorge Soler also hitting home runs for the Kansas City Royals. And we had 
a couple nice shots out there by Cabrera and Rodgers. Good to see Rodgers doing some things. We obviously want to develop him. We don't expect to win a lot of games this year, but we do need to develop the little bit of young talent that we do have on this team. And a lot of that is going to be shown to you guys in the form of minor league play. So get ready. I said I was going to make this an immersive franchise, and I am. As we do get the win in the second game of two against the Kansas City Royals. So we end up splitting the series with a 2-1 victory in this game as Nico Goodrum hits a solo shot in the game. Miguel Cabrera with the other RBI. Phil Meyer pitched meh for Kansas City. And Ivan Nova pitched really well for a six and a third of one earned run ball. The bullpen did their job. So you love to see it. Then we go into another series against Cleveland, this time a home series. We lose the first game three to two, scoring two runs in the seventh inning. But we will lose the game. Reyes and Candelario with our RBIs. Cleveland, though, gets a decent performance from Clevenger to get the win, and Boyd, not a great performance from him. He has not been on fire to start this season. That next game, the second game against Cleveland, we win it 4-1 to one with three runs scored in the 11th inning, so a three-run shot by C.J. Cron to give us the win. Carrasco pitched pretty good, but Wood kind of blew this game for Cleveland there in that 11th inning, giving up that three-run bomb to Cron. Godley pitched Godley again. He's got a .61 ERA so far on this young season. And in the final game, the rubber game against Cleveland, we win it 4-3. to three. Cleveland scored a run in the eighth. It wasn't enough. We scored two in the third, two in the fifth for our four runs. And as you can see from the box score, Vizcaino, he gets three RBIs in this one, and Nico Goodrum hits a solo shot. Savale, not good. Four earned runs in five innings for Cleveland. Norris, two earned runs in five innings for us. Farmer gave up the other run, which was later on in the game. Oh, that wasn't the rubber game. Okay, that was a four-game set. My apologies. 4-3 we win in the 10th inning. We score one in the 5th, one in the 7th, and one in the 9th, and one in the 10th to win this thing as we were down 3 to nothing after just three innings. So good that we could get that done. Whitgren with a blown save as Brad Hand played set up in that game. Turnbull. Not a good performance from him. He started out this season with an 8-10 ERA, but the other pitchers did what they needed to do. We've started this season out 6-3. Build up the hype in the comment section. Don't forget to drop a like. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and you want to build a winner together. Thank you all. See you next time. You're a pretty little star boy.